All right. Um, vertical springs are slightly different than horizontal spring, block spring problems because of gravity. And when you have a vertical spring, you know, you have like a sort of an equilibrium where a spring is not compressed or stretched, but the block is not on it. But when you actually put the block on that spring, what happens is it stretches to a different equilibrium position, you know? And then it's, it's going to basically, you know, oscillate back and forth, back and forth, and so on. So, so the vertical springs are a little tricky because you have to understand gravity's involved, okay? So let's take a look at this problem here and see if we could approach this without any issues. So here we have a 0 0.05 kilogram mass. Uh, I guess I should do that, huh? <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Thanks. All right. Does that help? All right. Thanks, Julieta. <laughs> Sorry. All right. So here we have 0 0.05 kilogram mass is attached to a bottom of a vertical spring. And this vertical spring, right, is important. So this is mass, right? This is the mass of this object here, M, right? And set vibrating. So if a maximum speed of this mass happens to be this, 0 0.15 meters per second, and its period is 0.5 seconds, right? Um, now, V max here. is omega a, right? That's the first derivative of the position function that we got, right? And whatever that came out to the, like, like for example, this is the position function. And if we take a derivative of it, we have to use the product rule, right? Or, or there's a chain rule. We have to take the derivative of this and then take the derivative of inside and then multiply it to the front. That becomes the V max, basically which is omega a, right? And period happens to be 0.5 seconds, right? That's the period t. Now, period t is, is if it starts from here and then it goes down back, let's say it's, it has to be completing the whole cycle. So if it starts from here, it goes down, up, and then back down to the original position will be the period. Okay, so find A, the constant, the spring constant right, of a spring, B, the amplitude of the motion, and C, the frequency of oscillation, right? Well, frequency is pretty easy, right? That's just the re inverse of the period, and so that's pretty easy. But for A, If we were to find the spring constant, we have to find basically what omega is, because omega right, is equal to square root of k over m. And that is in your notes. Right here, right? Omega is equal to k over m, all right? So we should be able to identify that, right? Now, there there will be other omegas, like for example, simple pendulum will have omega of g over l. These are good thing to memorize, actually, right? And the block with spring with square root of k over m, right? And then there's a, there's other one torsion one which is k over i, right? And physical pendulum 
where this is a little bit more complex. This is this H is not height, by the way. So it's a little different than height. All right. So this is like the H of the parallel axis, basically. So the square root of MGH over I. All right. So memorize these if you can, because it will save you so much time. All right. All right. So we have this, but we also know omega is equal to 2 pi f, right? Or simply 2 pi over the period t, right? That's what omega is. So I guess we could set them equal to each other, right? Because we know the mass, we know period, so we could probably calculate for k, right? So this is just straight out plug and chug then, right? So we can say right, square root of k over m is equal to 2 pi over the period t, right? So k is equal to, square both sides, we get 4 pi squared over the period squared times m, right? Would what be the k, all right? All right, so you could just plug in the values, 4 pi squared over 0 0.5 squared times m, which is 0 0.05 kilograms, and you should get k value to be somewhere around 7.89 newtons per meter. Okay. Part B, the amplitude of the motion. The amplitude happens to be what? Since V of T is equal to negative omega A, right? Sine of omega T, okay? So V max, therefore, V max is this. Okay, now this negative is, you know, up and down, so it basically gives us direction of where, if it's going up or down, right? So since we're looking at just the magnitude of it, you don't have to really think about the negative part if you don't want to, okay? So V max is equal to, basically, omega A in this case. So we can solve for amplitude. So here, my amplitude is equal to V max over omega, okay? So, let's solve for it. Uh, what do we get? Um, we got 0 0.15 over omega. You can use either one, 2 pi over the period T or 2 pi F, right? So 2 pi over the period t. And if you work that out, you're going to get 0 0.15 times the period of 0 0.5 over 2 pi. And that comes out to, I don't know, what do you get? Something like uh, 0 0.5 meters as your amplitude. All right. And for part C, frequency is just one over the period, really, right? So that's easy. So one over 0 0.5 is equal to um, two hertz. Now, this is a pretty important problem, okay? This really gives all, everything that you should be aware of. So this, this really is a good problem to understand, okay? So here, we have x is equal to 6 meters times cosine of 3 pi, 
radians per second, right? So this whole thing is called phase. And this here, right here, this, this little extra is called phase shift, okay? Uh, shift. Okay. And depending on what this phase shift is, it tells you where it's going to really start. This phase shift tells you me where it is, whether it's going to start here at the equilibrium or away or this way here or or at the other ends, okay? So this this tells you where the beginning of the starting position is really, right? This here is the amplitude, obviously, right? So this is, and this here is the omega, right? So, phase shift or starting angle. Okay, at T is equal to zero. All right, so. At t is equal to two seconds, what are a, the displacement, b, the velocity, c, the acceleration? So for that, all you have to do is just plug in two seconds for this one at t and then find out what the value is for displacement. And for b, for velocity, you just have to take a derivative of this and then plug in two seconds, really, right? So let's get that started. So for part a, it's simply the position x is equal to like six times cosine of right three pi right times t which is two seconds right plus pi over three. So when you do this, make sure your calculator is in radiant mode. You know, some people leave it in degree mode and they get like, oh, no, it's not working. So, so make sure that happens. Again, this is the phase again, right? Okay. So here you get six times cosine of 19 pi over three, right? And that comes out to six times 0 0.5, right? And that is equal to three meters. So it is three meters away. Right? From zero. All right, for what about part B? For part B, right? V of T is equal to X prime of T, right? So this is basically X of T, right? So if you take a derivative of this and then plug in two seconds afterwards, right? You get negative six times. If you take a derivative of this, you got t here, so you got three pi. So you have to multiply that by three pi. Right? Here, this goes to zero if you take a derivative of that. So this is constant, right? Times sine of, right? All this mess, right? So you get here sine of. 3 pi times 2, right, plus pi over 3, right? Therefore, if you work that out, right, you're going to get uh, negative uh, 18 pi, right, times sine of 19 pi over 3. And that comes out to negative 49 meters per second. Okay. 
from part C, A of T is equal to V prime of T, which is equal to X double prime of T. So basically take a derivative of this, right? So if you do that, you're going to get negative 6 times 3 pi times, again, if you take the derivative of inside here, right, only this one's going to remain, which is 3 pi times cosine of all this mess, right? 3 pi t plus pi over 3, right? So you plug in two seconds in here to get your acceleration, right? So here, then this becomes. Uh, negative 3 times 3 is 9, 9 times 6 is 54, right? pi squared right? times cosine of 19 pi over 3, right? and that comes out to negative 266 meters per second squared. That's the acceleration at two seconds. Okay, so all this is that. All right, next. What about part D? What is the phase of the motion? Right? Well, phase of the motion is just this is the phase of the motion, right? So phase is equal to simply three pi t plus pi over 3. And that is, at 2 seconds, that is 3 pi times 2, right, um, plus pi over 3. And I think that's simply 19 pi over 3 that we already used many times. You can leave it at that, or if you want to, you know, you just work it out and get 19.9 radians. Right? And then for E, what are the frequency and the period? So for part E, the frequency, right, omega is equal to 2 pi f, right? And we know omega happens to be um, 3 pi right here, right? This is the omega, right? So you get 3 pi is equal to 2 pi f, so our frequency is equal to 3 pi over 2 pi, right, which is equal to 1.5 hertz, or cycles, or cycles per second, or 1.5 hertz. And for F, period is just 1 over frequency, okay? So that is equal to 1 over 1.5, which is uh, 0 0.667 seconds. Boom.
All right. So this is good thing to know because this pretty much covers everything in the first part of the notes. All right. All right, let's take a look at the next one, number 22. This is also pretty decent. Now here, we went from position to acceleration. But for 22, we're going to go the other way. Right? We're going to go from acceleration to position. So hopefully we can do the opposite way. All right. So here, number 22, the end of one of the uh, prongs of a tuning fork that executes simple harmonic motion of frequency 1,000 hertz. So here... So this frequency of 1,000 hertz is that right? frequency. The amplitude, the amplitude happens to be 0.4 millimeters. So make sure you know that is 0.4 millimeters. So amplitude is equal to 0 0.4 times 10 to the negative third meters, all right? Make sure you keep everything in MKS system. All right, find a maximum acceleration. Okay, well, we know acceleration, in part A, acceleration of function time is equal to negative omega squared A times cosine of omega T. Right? So this right here is... This right here is the maximum acceleration. Okay. And this happens, right? This happens uh, when this cosine of omega t is equal to 1. What is the maximum value, right? So when cosine of omega t is equal to 1. And, and when does that happen? That happens when cosine is at 0. Does that make sense? When cosine is 0, that's when the maximum cosine function happens, right? So if you look at it like this, the cosine function is like that. So it happens either at 0 or 2 pi. Okay? So therefore, t, if you set the t is equal to 0 seconds, right? It's going to happen. Or, if you want to, you could say when, when it's down here, you're going to also get a maximum here, right? Or when t is equal to a period over 2. Or it happens in here, right? When t is equal to a period t. So it happens at all these places, and a max happens. All right. All right. So
So what is A max? A max is equal to then. Omega uh, is 2 pi. Let me write that here again to just to remind us that omega is equal to 2 pi f. And since omega is equal to 2 pi f, we'll say 2 pi times 1,000 hertz. times the amplitude. What's the amplitude? The amplitude is that, which is 0 0.4 times 10 to the negative third. Right? Oh, I forgot to square this. I have to square it. So, if you work that out, you know, you get 4 pi squared times 1,000 squared times this, and you'll get something like 1.58 times 10 to the fourth meters per second squared. All right. So that's the acceleration at these three points, these three times. Okay. All right, what about part B? Part B. The maximum speed of the end of prompt, right? So V of T is equal to, right, negative omega A times sine of omega t. Right? So if, if we were to look at this graph, right, the sine graph right, is, is actually like this. I mean, because it's negative, it should go like that. But I'm just putting the sine graph up, so just to, OK? So maximum happens at right here, right, right here, right, and right here, right. Okay. So where does that happen? That happens at uh, t over 4 and 3t over 4, right? So this happens at t is equal to the period over 4 or uh, 3t over 4, right? That's when it happens. Okay? So here, this is, again, maximum Vmax, right? And Vmax is equal to omega A. So omega is 2 pi times 1,000 times A, which is 0 0.4 times 10 to the negative third. And if you multiply that, I guess you're going to get uh, 2.51 meters per second is how fast it's moving at those, at these two times right here. OK? All right, so what about the acceleration? Find the acceleration. All right, so to find the acceleration, Let's find out what the position is first when the prong has displacement of 0.2 meters, right? Uh, I mean, 0.2 millimeters, right? 
So if we had our position function, x of t is equal to right, a cosine of omega t, right? But this basically happens to be what the position is at two, I'm sorry, point 0.2 millimeters. So this x is equal to then 0 0.2 times 10 to the negative third meters, okay? So we can plug that in here, 0 0.2 times 10 to the negative third is equal to, right? The amplitude, we already know it to be this, so it is 0 0.4 times 10 to the negative third, right, times cosine of, right, omega t. I want to know what time this occurs, so I'm looking for time, right, so need to find time t when x is equal to 0 0.2 times 10 to the negative third meters, right? So here, omega, we already know it, right? That's 2 pi f, right? So 2 pi times 1,000 times t. All right, therefore, we could find time, right? Um, I guess if you divide this to both sides, you're going to get a 0.5 is equal to uh, cosine of 2,000 pi, right? T, right? So inverse cosine. So 2,000 pi t is equal to cosine inverse of 0 0.5, right? So you could find time now. t is equal to, I guess, uh, uh, what is cosine inverse of 0.5? Uh, it's like 0.66 or something like that. Well, you could do the rest, right? It's pretty easy. So, um, cosine inverse of 0 0.5 over 2,000 pi, and you should get 1.67 times 10 to the negative fourth seconds. That's a, that's a pretty small value. So once we know that time, now we can use that time to figure out the acceleration and speed, just like what we did here in the first part of A and B, okay? So we can now say, okay, acceleration, right, acceleration at 0 0.2 millimeters is equal to, right, negative Omega squared A cosine of omega T, right? So we could plug in this time into here, right? We can plug this time into here. Okay? So it just becomes a big equation now, really. So negative, right? Omega, we already said it was... Uh, 2,000 pi t, right? No, 2,000 pi, right? So, 2,000 pi quantity squared, right? Times amplitude of, what's the amplitude? Point 0.4 times 10 to the negative third times cosine of, right, 
this times this t right here, right? So here, 2,000 pi right, times 1.67 times 10 to the negative 4. All right. Wait. Okay. So rest is just algebra. Plug it into your calculators. So you get negative when you do this correctly in a radian mode. 7.89 times 10 to the third meters per second squared is what you should get. A at 0 0.2 millimeters. Or I could say A of this time in here, but you know, it's too much to write. And then, of course, D, right? part D, the same thing, except now we're using V, right? So you can use V of T at 0 0.2 millimeters, right? Again, we could plug in this time into here, right? So here, negative, right? Omega A sine of, right, omega t. Omega, we already know it as 2,000 pi, right? So negative 2,000 pi times the amplitude of 0 0.4 times 10 to the negative third meters times sine of 2,000 pi again times this time right here, 1.67 times 10 to the negative fourth seconds. All right. So again, plug it into your calculators. So V at 0 0.2 millimeters is equal to, I think you get positive, positive, 2.17 meters per second. All right. So these are really good problems to know as far as the, the kinematics of block, spring block problems. So this is just the motion. Right, studying the motion of it. All right. Any questions so far? All right. All right. So let's do one more. Okay. Let's do one more. Here. I'm gonna take a break or yeah, all right. You're supposed to remind me of that, Stanley. All right, let's take a five minute break. Uh, yeah. So people can just adjust a little bit. So number twenty-five, right? We got two blocks, one block on top of the another one. So one kilogram block is on top of ten kilogram block. And the 10 kilogram block is attached to a spring with a constant of, spring constant of 200 newtons per meter, right? So horizontal frictionless surface, and that's important to know, frictionless surface, because if it's friction, if there's friction involved, then it's going to slow down eventually and lose energy. But since this is frictionless surface, assuming that spring itself is a ideal spring, when I say ideal spring, the real springs would actually, when you go back and forth, back and forth like this, the material itself will heat up. And when it heats up, obviously it's going to expand and it's going to actually lose energy through thermodynamics, you know. So, so ideal spring, it will never heat up, you know, and you'll never really lose energy through um, 
thermal energy. All right. All right. So the coefficient of static friction between the two blocks is 0.4. So there's a static friction between here, right? Mu sub s to be 0 0.4. What is the maximum possible amplitude of a simple harmonic motion if no slippage is to occur between the blocks? So if there's an acceleration that would cause greater than the frictional force between these two blocks, then it's going to start to slide off. So you have to find that maximum force and then use that to figure out the maximum acceleration, right? So once we get the maximum acceleration, most likely we can probably figure out the amplitude part if we use the maximum acceleration, setting that equal to omega squared a, right? So that's our that's our pretty much our our, our strategy, right? So if we were to take a look at uh, the top block right here, the top block, right? So if we were to look at the top block with mass m, right? There are obviously three forces. There's one. There's going to be one fg going this way, right? And then of course we have f normal going this way, and then the frictional force that's going to hold this block on top of the other block, right? So frictional force is equal to mu times F normal. And since this is a horizontal and there, there are no other vertical forces except for weight, our mu times F normal becomes just mg, right? So we can set, right? sum of all force is equal to ma max, right? Sum of all force, there's only one force horizontally, and that is a friction. So ma max is equal to a friction, which is mu mg. So notice how the mass of the top block cancels out. So my a max top block can withstand is equal to 0 0.4 times 9.8. So my A max is equal to, uh, I guess you get 3.92 meters per second squared as my A max. Okay. So now we know, right, a of t is equal to negative omega squared a times cosine of omega t, right? Again, a max happens when this is equal to zero, right? And then t over two and t, right? Period. So this is basically a max, right? This right here. So when this goes to one, right? When this goes to one, you get your A max to be that. So my A max then is equal to right omega squared A. Right? So what is omega? Well, Omega is equal to square root of, right, k over m, right? But, but this m is the total mass. Therefore, it is equal to square root of k over m plus m. Okay? because there are two masses attached to that spring. So we can find omega now. Omega is equal to 
square root of the k value is 200 over uh, 1 plus 10. And that is, if you work it out, I think you get something like, well, what do you get? You get something like uh, 4 point, Point two six four. All right. So here my a max now is equal to zero uh, four point four point two six four squared times a. All right. We already know what a max is, so we can plug that a max in here. So my A is equal to right, 3.92 over 4.264 squared. And that comes out to 0 0.216 meters as my amplitude. Right? All right, now what happens if we have two springs? <laughs> that can happen. I know. I know. And of course, it does happen. Look at that. Voila. Right? So we have two identical springs. So that's pretty easy then. Because we have two identical springs, right? When, when, Let's say when this thing is like pushed this way, then this is compressed, but this is stretched, right? So you're gonna have that compression and stretching of two identical springs. So you're gonna have two times the Kx happening. Does that make sense? If they were not identical, then you would have two different forces pushing and pulling, and depending on which one is pushing and pulling, you're going to have to have different two, two different k's. But since these are identical, we can say the f total, right? So maybe I could draw that out a little bit so you guys can see what I'm saying. So if I were to like take a look at A situation when this thing is already so if this if this were So if this were like 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 this is compressed and then this this was like stretched right. so so note notice this k value that is being stretched is going to be same as the you know the force of this thing compressing, pulling this way, well, pushing this way, and this pulling this way, it's going to have to be the same, right? Because they're the same k values. Okay, so it's 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 like having two forces acting, identical forces acting on it. Okay, so it's as though if you were to put it here, the same thing. Okay, so F total, right? is equal to negative 2 times kx, okay? 
is because there are two forces of two identical springs acting on it. So, so that is equal to MA. All right. So um, show that the frequency of oscillation of the frictionless surface is equal to this. So we have to show that. OK? So here we can say the force. There's two ways to approach this. Yeah. Because if you were to look at this X right here, X, I'm going to, I'm going to show this X here. X is equal to, right? A cosine of omega t. That's generic right? equation. And we know A is equal to right? negative omega squared A cosine of omega t. So that's another generic equation, correct? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this. So negative 2kx is equal to ma. Can you see what I'm going to do now next? I'm going to replace x with this into here. And I'm going to replace a this in here. So now what I have is negative 2k times a cosine of omega t. Okay, is equal to m times negative omega squared a cosine of omega t. You could already see the negatives will cancel out. You could see that a cosine of omega t will also cancel out, leaving me with just 2k is equal to m omega squared. So omega is equal to square root of 2k over m. But omega is also equal to 2 pi f. So if I set, the, set these two equal to each other, right, square both sides. I get so 2k over m is equal to 4 pi squared f squared. So if I divide both sides, my f squared then is equal to 2k over 4 pi squared m. Therefore, if I square root both sides, my f is equal to then uh, square root of, I guess, I could take this out of the square root sign, so I get 2 pi here, times square root of 2k over I guess I didn't even have to do that. <laughs> Uh, oh well, I could just divide both sides by pi of 2 pi and that would have been a lot easier. 
but I just like to make it things complicated for myself for some reason. All right, so that was that wasn't as bad as okay. All right. Now, utilizing that same idea and same principle here, I suppose that the two springs in the figure above right have different spring constants while now we have two different springs, right? Not the identical ones, K1 and K2. Show that the frequency of F, right, of oscillation of the block is given by this. Okay? So where F1 and F2, F1 and F1, hmm, it should be F1 and F2, are frequency which the block would oscillate if connected only to spring one or spring two individually. I guess this, this is a typo. It should be F1 and F2. All right. Now, for this, instead of two times kx, it'll be negative k1x plus negative k2x is equal to ma. Because we have two different forces act, acting on it, right? But we can still factor out the a, I mean an x, because this is common term, right? So we can say negative k1 minus, okay, well, plus negative k2, okay, let's leave it that way, times x. Okay. And you can factor out the negative if you want, is equal to MA. Right. So if we replace the X with this A cosine omega T, right? So I get negative right, K1 plus K2 times A cosine of omega T. Right, is equal to m times right negative omega squared a cosine of omega t. Again, you can see that this will cancel out with this. Negatives will cancel out, right? Giving me, if I divide both sides by M, I get K1 plus K2 over M, right, is equal to omega squared. Okay? Well, this here, right, this here, I can split them up and say, K1 over M plus K2 over M is equal to omega squared. But this right here, K1 is omega 1 is equal to square root of K1 over M. And omega 2 is equal to square root of K2 over M. So I can re replace this here with omega 1 squared and replace this with omega 2 squared is equal to omega squared. But omega, again, omega 1 is equal to 2 pi f1. Okay? And then omega 2 is equal to 2 pi f2. So if I substitute that in there, I get 2 pi f1 squared plus 2 pi f2 squared is equal to 2 pi f squared. So I can pretty much 
go from here, okay, you could see, you could already see that 2 pi is going to cancel out, right? So 4 pi f squared, f1 squared, plus 4 pi squared, f2 squared is equal to 4 pi squared, f squared. So you could see all the 4 pi squareds can cancel out nicely, leaving you with f is equal to square root of f1 squared plus f2 squared. So there we proved it. So that's kind of convenient to know if there are two different experiments. Okay? I don't think I have time to do another one. So I'll stop here for today, all right? And then Wednesday, I'll probably do some more and then let you know what's going on as far as the assessment is concerned for chapter 11 and 12, and maybe even 14. We should get 11 and 12 out of the way first anyway, so I'll give you more detail on that on Wednesday, all right? So I'll stop the lecture here for today. <laughs>